Last week, many of us awoke to the news that we had negative economic growth in the last quarter. Although one quarter a trend does not make, it was not welcome news, it was not expected news. Unfortunately, what has become expected news is subpar one and a half to two percent economic growth when historic trends are above three and clearly the economy is capable of four percent or greater. Two percent economic growth means that millions of Americans lay awake at night pondering insecure financial futures for themselves and their families. Hardworking Americans demand a healthy economy and we cannot have a healthy economy until we have a housing finance system that is both sustainable and competitive. In its current form, FHA is clearly an impediment to such a system. Because of this, the Financial Services Committee today is holding its first in a series of hearings to examine the FHA, now the largest mortgage insurance company in the U.S. Historically, FHA has represented roughly 10 percent of the mortgage insurance market and has fulfilled its role of being the provider of mortgage credit for certain discrete populations, particularly first-time home buyers and low and moderate income Americans who qualify under stringent tests. Today, however, FHA has strayed far from its original mission and legislative purpose. It doesn't just focus on low and moderate income Americans. It provides mortgage insurance for expensive homes valued as high as $729,000. By offering riskier terms than private competitors, the FHA today controls 56 percent, well more than half of the total mortgage insurance market in terms of numbers of loans. Talk about too big to fail. So instead of complementing a robust private mortgage market, the FHA high cost loan limits and extremely low down payment requirements put in a direct competition with the private sector. In addition, we know that uh, as bad as that is, its uh, single family insurance fund is flat broke. The independent actuarial study released last November shows that the FHA single family mutual insurance fund has a negative, I repeat, negative economic value of $16.3 billion. If the FHA were a private financial institution, likely somebody would be fired, somebody would be fined, or the institution would find itself in receivership. Instead, it is merely and merrily on its way to becoming the recipient of the next great taxpayer bailout. Finally, given their high loan-to-value, low credit score policies, and high rates of default, it's an open question whether FHA has now morphed into countrywide. Arguably, the FHA has now become the nation's largest subprime lender, all with the blessings of the administration. FHA's loan down payment lures families into having an unrealistic view of home ownership obligations. Their high loan limits encourage people to buy more home than they can possibly afford to keep. By putting borrowers in homes where one in eight loans end in default, the FHA can make entire communities worse off, trapping more and more families as property values fall. You do not help families achieve the American dream by putting them into homes they cannot afford. This is how you turn the American dream into a nightmare.